Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our uh, latest video tips for the server technology brand. Today, we're going to be talking about our mass deployment tool called the Startup Stick. And our presenter is going to be Bruce Auclair, who's our systems engineer for server technology, senior systems engineer for server technology. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bruce. And um, afterwards, I'll unmute everybody, and uh, we can have a question and answer period. So I'll turn this over to Bruce. Thank you. OK. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, as Jim mentioned, today's topic is configuring and using mass deployment tool. In the case of server technology intelligent PDUs, this is what we call startup stick. So let's take a look. You can find information about startup stick at our homepage in the products accessories category. And there it is, startup stick. Take a quick look at the data sheet. Not going to go through this, but the, what is Startup Stick? Startup Stick is a quick and easy solution to initial PDU configuration. It allows you to use an Excel spreadsheet tool to configure a number of parameters for one to thousands of PDUs, and then to export the files to the Startup Stick via the USB interface. Then one at a time, connect the Startup Stick to each master PDU to very quickly transfer the configuration data and automatically restart the PDU so it becomes accessible over the network. With PDUs already installed in the rack or cabinet and energized for at least three minutes, each PDU can be configured in about five to six seconds. So if the PDUs are all lined up uh, in a row at the same facility, you can figure about 15 seconds per PDU as you move down the line. The device itself is effectively a USB to uh, I squared C converter. We've got a USB port on one side. The other end is an IS, uh, I squared C interface with an RJ12, uh, a six conductor RJ11 type interconnect. And in between is a microcontroller that converts uh, INI, initialization data, INI data to a proprietary format that is supported by the server technology PDU. So with a, uh, with a startup stick, attach it to your computer, which I have just done. And the first thing to note is that uh, you wanna make sure you have the latest version of the spreadsheet tool. Version 1.06 is the current version. That's one on what is present on my uh, startup stick. But uh, if you don't have 1.06, your first step would be to go here to the spreadsheet tool button and save that file to the startup stick. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. I have the latest version already. Once you have the latest version, you're ready to get started. So go ahead and launch the spreadsheet tool. Okay, the first thing once you launch the spreadsheet tool is that you need to enable content. That is because it uses uh, virtual basic macros. So enable content. And then you're ready to get started configuring various parameters. I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but uh, amongst the first things you will need to do if your PDU was purchased in, two, uh, in 2020, uh, starting in January of 2020 due to California Senate Bill 327, uh, it is now required upon initial access that the uh, default password be changed. So step number one that is required will be to change the password. In most cases, uh, you're gonna change all of the PDUs that have the same initial password for the admin account. So I'm gonna leave the option here as global. Choices are global per unit and formula. I'm gonna apply it equally the, uh, the new password to all the PDUs that I'm going to configure. So I'm going to type in a new password. 
and move on. System location is a field that will most likely be or should be uh, unique by a PDU. It's typically, typically going to be used as a cabinet name or an identifier for the cabinet, the system. So I am going to set that per unit. And upon doing so, if I take a look at our unit specific tab at the bottom, we will find a system location field has shown up on the unit specific tab. Now, the first thing you really need to do is put in the serial number. This is a network interface card serial number of the PDUs that you wish to configure. That will be found on a label on the PDU itself with the barcode. That same label is found on the outside of each and every box. So if you have a, a, a barcode reader, you can scan all of the, uh, the PDU barcodes, get them into a list, copy and paste into the, into the spreadsheet tool. If you actually order a USB stick at the same time as PDUs, that startup stick will be provided with a pre-populated list of the serial numbers. In this case, it was not. I am going to put in a serial number of a PDU that I will be configuring here. So seven digits. That is the serial number of my PDU. I am going to give just a, a name of test for the system location. I'm going to switch back to the configuration tab. And we're going to continue on down the line. Note that there is an instructions tab as well. I'm not going to go through it. Uh, you can take a look at it yourself. And I'm going to give you a demonstration of how simple this tool is to use. I'm going back to configuration. I've applied a, a, a password change at this point. I applied a per unit column for a location field that will be unique to every PDU. I'm not going to change or go through every one of these, but we have options to change temperature scale, sequencing order. When we get down to network mode. Out of the box, DHCP is enabled by default. Anytime you see a gray or a, a grayed out box, that means no change will be applied. I specifically intend to assign static addressing, so I need to click this twice to give a, an empty box that will disable DHCP. And I'm going to move on down. We've got options for IPv6. In this case, I am going to give the PDU an IPv4 address, which, as we all know, will need to be unique for each and every PDU. So I have selected per unit for the IPv4 address. Now take a look back at the unit specific tab, and we have a new column. Now this list could be, you know, very long. I'm just going to configure one PDU today. and jump back to the configuration sheet. And so I have applied a per unit IPv4 address. Subnet mask will typically or most likely always be the same for all the PDUs in the facility. So I'm gonna leave that option at global. Just need to put the subnet mask in this field. And go on to the next one. Gateway most likely will be the same. So I will again leave the, the value uh, to global. And the same is true for the DNS server. One and two most likely will be the same for all the PDUs. I will leave that set for global. Okay, so we've got the basics for the network addressing configured. Telnet is if the PDU was purchased in 2020 or later, uh, also due to California Senate Bill uh, 327, Telnet is disabled out of the box. So I'm just going to leave it that way. It's not secure. SH, SSH is enabled um, out of the box. So I'm not going to make any changes there as well. I am, however, going to enable HTTP, which out of the box is now disabled. I'm going to enable it simply so when we log into the PDU momentarily, it's going to be a little bit faster. So I've clicked it twice, or I uh, put a checkbox in there. I'm going to skip through some of these. We've got options for enabling FTP server, 
as well as client, which can be used for auto updates. And then we've got options for SMTP, the simple mail transport protocol, which uh, is for receiving notifications of events, uh, uh, actions, authentications, et cetera. I'm not gonna bother with any of that. Out of the box, SNMP version one and two, I'm sorry, SNMP version two and version three are now disabled. I do wish to enable SNMP version two. So I'll go ahead and click that box. I'm going to leave it at global because I wish to have that apply to all of the PDUs I'll be configuring. Most likely, people will use the same get community strings and set community strings. So I will leave that at global as well. And go ahead and put in string. Right. We'll move on, we just take a quick look. We've got SNMP the configuration support. You can have up to eight users that could be defined initially. We've got options for uh, SNTP, that's the simple network time protocol. I'm not gonna mess with any of that. And then you could optionally enable syslog through the startup stick as well. Let's take a quick look back at the unit specific tab. I've got an IP address, I've got the system location, and I've got the serial number of the PDU. I'm now ready to export the file to the startup stick. Go back to the configuration tab. At the top, we find a export, select export directory button. I'm going to select the, the startup stick that in this case is drive D. And then I need to click the export settings button. Okay, so. We have export complete. Before I disconnect the uh, startup stick and connect it to the PDU, let's take a look at what that did. Okay, so previously we had just the startup stick spreadsheet tool. Now we have a variety of files. The most important is this, this one here, the serial number of the PDU to which it will be applied. I had on the configuration tab, I had disabled DHCP. I gave it an IPv4 address, a subnet mask and the other values. And I had enabled SNMP version two with public and private as the get community and set community strings. If you recall, I enabled HTTP and I gave the system or the location name test. And I also changed the password to let me in instead of the default as required. So at this point, I'm ready to disconnect the startup stick. and then move on to plugging it into a PDU. Okay, so the startup stick, when, when you're ready, the startup stick, excuse me, we'll need to plug into the link port on the master PDU. If you have both a master PDU and a link PDU, you may have a cable connecting them. You will disconnect that link cable from the master PDU, you're going to plug the startup stick into the link port on the master PDU. And I will be doing that right now. I have no good way to show you this. I am plugging the startup stick that I just exported the files to into a PDU. Zoom in good enough here. You can see that, oops, that we have an LED. It's a multicolor LED it will flash uh, an amber orange color when it is talking to the PDU, giving the PDU the information that you told it to. Um, if all is well, it will change to a solid green light. If there is a partial failure, it will be a solid amber or orange LED. And if there is a complete failure, such as you plug it into a PDU for which the serial number doesn't match anything in its list, it would go to a red LED. I've done that already. I've plugged into the PDU. I've got a solid green light. The PDU at this point is now restarting. And it's gonna be because I disabled DHCP, it should be about another 45 seconds or so. And the PDU should at that point be online. I've just reconnected the link cable between the master PDU and the link PDU. And the system is restarting as we speak. can't 
to see it, but it just finished. PDU has restarted. Network cable, cable is already attached. Okay, so I've logged into the PDU. If you recall, I had given it a location name of test, which we see in the upper right hand corner there. We can take a look at some of the other values that I configured. One of them was SNMP. So we now see that SNMP version two is enabled with the get community and set community strings that I chose. And of course, we can see that the PDU ended up with the addressing that I chose as well. So if I have a number of PDUs to configure, I could sit down at my desk, do all the configuration through this uh, spreadsheet tool. Uh, this is initial configuration data only. It's what is intended to be able to get it up and running on the network, as we just saw. And then I would take that startup stick and just go down the row in the data center facility. Now, it is initial configuration. If you're interested in learning more about the INI uh, format, what we call the server technology, INI configuration file format, STIC for short, you will find more information about STIC protocol on our firmware downloads page for Pro2 products at this point here. So it is using a well-known INI configuration format. It provides a very simple interface to configure the startup stick for up to you know, many thousands of PDUs, bring it into the data center, walk down the row, and you're up and running. And with that, I will pass it back to Jim. If anybody has questions, he's gonna open it up. All right, thank you very much, Bruce. Great job. Um, I'm gonna unmute everybody. Though if you are muted, um, you do need to unmute yourself. Yeah. And uh, uh, I apologize, I did forget uh, something. If, if Do I still have control of the screen? Yes, you do, Bruce. Okay. Uh, if there, after the startup stick has been used and you've plugged it into all the PDUs, if you did end up with a, a, a non-green LED after plugging it into a PDU, it is important to note that you will find a log file on the startup stick that will give you additional data about what the failure was. In this case, I had 100% success and the system restarted and I was up and running. Uh, but if there was a failure, you would uh, have a means of finding out what that was with an identifier for what the failure is and what the particular line in the INI file that failed. Very good. All right. Are there any questions? My name is Ramon on the Tech Data team. Um, I got a question in regards to the password on it. So I see that the password on the Excel file and both the INI are saved in the standard text format. Is it is it well to say that the technicians and the IT tech team is supposed to go back in and securely change the password on all the devices? Well, that you would, yeah, you would typically change them afterwards. It's just a requirement that it be changed initially now. So uh, the spreadsheet tool has to change it. Any any form of initial access, whether that be through serial port uh, or logging in using the default IP address, the fallback address, any any form upon initial login, you're forced to change it. Uh, yeah, this is not necessarily intended that you would stick with that password after the PDUs have all been configured. You do have the ability to use that STI, the, the, the server technology, INI configuration file format to then make additional changes. And when you, if you were to take a look at the stick documentation here, I'm not gonna go through it, but it does uh, provide a form of encryption for the password so it is not clear text. Perfect, thanks Bruce. Thanks. All right, are there any other questions? If you want, you can type them into the chat or the questions section. All 
All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we'll have another video plan for July that will be going over firmware upgrades and installing certificates. Uh, Brandon will be presenting that uh, presentation and you guys should all receive um, emails announcing it. Um, hope to see you all there and thank you everyone for participating. Um, we hope to all see you next time. Take care.